Hello classmates, hello mom. We are group C and we are going to discuss about narcotics and anti-migraine agents and the three classes of narcotics which are the narcotic agonist, narcotic uh, agonist antagonist, and narcotic antagonist. Narcotics and anti-migraine agents provide treatment for acute or chronic severe pain. These agents exert their effect on the brain and spinal cord to alter the way impulses from the peripheral nerves and <clears throat> process. As a result, pain perception and tolerance are, are altered. Starting with narcotic, narcotic mechanism of actions and indication, narcotic drugs are divided into three classes. Narcotic agonists reacts with opioid receptors in the CNS causes analgesia, sedation, or euphoria. They are classified as controlled substances because they have potential for physical dependence. Narcotic agonists, on the other, narcotic agonists antagonists, on the other hand, stimulate certain opioid receptors but blocks the other such receptors. They exert similar analgesic effect with that of morphine, but they have less potential for abuse. However, they are associated with more psychotic-like re reactions. Narcotic antagonists bind strongly to opioid receptors without causing receptor activation. They block opioid receptor effects as well as effects of too much opioids in the system. Moreover, narcotic agonists relief of moderate to severe acute pain or chronic pain. Preoperative medication, component of combination therapy to, for severe chronic pain, intraspinal to reduce intractable, intractable pain. Narcotic agonist antagonist, relief of moderate to severe pain, or anesthetic medication and is supplement to surgical anesthesia. It may be desirable for relieving chronic pain in patients who are susceptible to narcotic dependence. Narcotic antagonists indicated for complete or partial reversal for narcotic depression diagnosis of suspected opioid overdose. So for the narcotics pharmacokinetics, uh, for the narcotic antagonists, Um, it is administered intravenously because it is most reliable way to achieve therapeutic levels of narcotics while intramuscular and subcutaneous administration offer varying rates of absorption. Uh, and absorption is slower in female than in males, male patients because of the normal fat content of female muscles and tissue. Um, these drugs undergo hepatic metabolism and are generally excreted in the urine and bile. And for the narcotic agonist antagonist, they are readily absorbed after IM administration and reach peak levels rapidly when given IV and are metabolized in the liver and are excreted in urine or feces. And for the narcotic antagonist, they may be administered parenterally, um, subcutaneous, IM or IV, or orally. These drugs are well absorbed after injection and are widely distributed in the body and undergo hepatic metabolism and, and are excreted primarily in the urine. So for the narcotic side effects, um, for the narcotic agonist, we have the CNS, lightheadedness, dizziness, psychosis, anxiety, fear, hallucination, pupil constriction, impaired mental processes, and for GI, nausea, vomiting, constipation, biliary spasm, and for GU, urethral spasm, urinary retention, hesitancy, loss of libido, and for others, sweating, physical and psychological dependence. And for the narcotic in this respiratory center depression, respiratory depression with apnea, cardiac arrest, and shock. 
For the narcotic agonists and antagonists, they have the CNS, the lightheadedness, dizziness, psychosis, anxiety, fear, hallucination, pupil constriction, impaired mental processes, and for GI, nausea, vomiting, constipation, bilary spasm, and for GU, urethral spasm, urinary retention, hesitancy, loss of libido, and for sweating, physical and psychological dependence, and narcotic-induced respiratory center depression, or respiratory depression with apnea, suppression of cough reflex. And for the narcotic antagonist, we have the CNS excitement, reversal of analgesic, CV, tachycardia, blood pressure changes, dyspnea, pulmonary edema, acute narcotic abstinence syndrome, nausea, vomiting, sweating, tachycardia, hypertension, tremulousness, feelings of anxiety. So, analoxone challenge should be administered before giving naltrexone to help to avoid acute reactions. Now for the narcotics contraindication. Now for the narcotic agonist, first is the allergy to narcotic agonist. It prevents the hypersensitivity reaction. Next is the diarrhea caused by toxic poisons. Drug depresses the GI activity and this could lead to increased absorption and toxicity. Respiratory dysfunction. Exacerbated by respiratory depression caused by the drug. Then, recent GI or GU surgery, acute abdomen, ulcerative colitis can be worsened by the GI depressive effects of the narcotics. Next is the head injuries, alcoholism, delirium tremens, cerebral vascular disease can be exacerbated by the central nervous system effects of the drug. Liver renal dysfunction can interfere with metabolism and excretion of the drug. Pregnancy and lactation. Potential adverse effects to the fetus and the baby. Now for the narcotic agonist and antagonist. Allergy to narcotic agonist and antagonist. Prevent hypersensitivity reaction. Next is the physical dependence on narcotics. Withdrawal symptoms may be precipitated. Next is the COPD, other respiratory dysfunction, can be exacerbated by respiratory depression. MICAD hypertension can be exacerbated by cardiac stimulatory effects. Renal Hepatic dysfunction interfere with drug metabolism and excretion. For pregnancy and lactation, potential adverse effects to the fetus and the baby. Now, biofin is specifically contraindicated to patients who are also allergic to sulfites to prevent cross hypersensitivity reactions. And now for the narcotic antagonist. Allergy to narcotic antagonists, it also prevents the hypersensitivity reaction for pregnancy and lactation. It potential adverse effects to the fetus and the baby also. And now for the narcotic addiction, precipitation of the withdrawal symptom. And lastly, it's a CV disease exacerbated by the reversal of the depressive effects of narcotics. Now for the narcotics drug or food interaction. Firstly, we have here a, a narcotic agonist. Barbit barbiturates or phenothiazines or MAOIs increase likelihood of respiratory depression, hypotension, and sedation or coma. Next is the SSRI, MAOI. DCA and St. John's Worth. Increased risk of potentially life threatening serotonin syndrome if taken with Tepentadol, the newest narcotic agonist that block norepinephrine reuptake in this central nervous system. <clears throat> Next is the narcotic agonist and antagonist. Also, barbiturates, phenothiazines, and MAOIs. 
increased likelihood of respiratory depression, hypotension, and sedation or coma. Lastly is the triphenylamine increased hallucinogenic or euphoric effect with pentazokine. So for the nursing consideration, um, narcotic agonist and antagonist for the nursing assessment is assess for mentioned cautions and contraindications such as drug allergy, respiratory dysfunction, myocardial infarction and CAD, hepatorenal dysfunction to prevent untoward complications. So conduct pain assessment with patient to establish baseline and evaluate effectiveness of drug therapy, perform physical, CNS, vital signs, bowel sounds, urine output, to establish baseline status before beginning therapy, determine drug effectiveness and evaluate for any potential adverse effect. So monitor laboratory results such as liver function, kidney function to determine need for possible dose adjustment and identify toxic drug effects. For the nursing diagnosis, impaired gas exchange related to respiratory depression, disturbed sensory perception related to CNS effects, constipation related to GI effects, risk for injury related to CNS effects. So for implementation with rationale, perform baseline and periodic pain assessment with patient to monitor drug effectiveness and provide appropriate changes in pain management protocol as needed. Have a narcotic antagonist and equipment for assisted ventilation readily available when administering this drug IV to provide patient support in case of severe reaction. So monitor timing of analgesic doses Prompt administration may provide a more acceptable level of analgesia and lead to a quicker resolution of the pain. Uh, provide non-pharmacological pain measures like breathing exercises, back rubs, and stress reduction to increase drug effectiveness and reduce pain. Um, provide comfort measures such as small frequent means for GI upset to help pain patient tolerate drug effects. Provide safety measures such as adequate lighting. Raise side rails to prevent injuries. Educate clients on therapy to promote understanding and compliance. So for an uh, evaluation, monitor patient response to therapy such as relief of pain, sedation. Monitor for adverse effects such as GI depression, respiratory depression, arrhythmias. Evaluate patient understanding on drug therapy by asking patient to name the drug. Its indication and adverse effects to watch for. Monitor patient compliance to drug therapy. So, next up. So, for the assessment of na narcotic antagonist, first is, assess for, first is assess for contraindications or cautions, um, any known allergies to these drugs, to avoid hypersensitivity reactions, history of narcotic addiction, which may lead to narcotic abstinence syndrome, history of myocardial infraction or coronary artery disease, which may lead to exacerbated by the reversal of opioid depression and current status of pregnancy and lactation, which requires cautious use of these drugs. Then, perform a physical assessment to establish baseline status before beginning therapy and for any potential adverse effects. And then um, assess the patient's neuro neurological status, including level of orientation, affect reflexes, and pupil size, to evaluate central nervous system effects. Um, monitor respiratory rate and auscultate lungs for adventitious sounds to evaluate respiratory status. Next is monitor vital signs, including pulse and blood pressure, to identify the changes and risk to cardiovascular system. And lastly is to obtain an electrocardiogram as appropriate to evaluate for cardiac effects. And then for th these are the possible nursing diagnosis, decreased cardiac output related to CV effects, risk for injury related to CNS effects, and deficient knowledge regarding drug therapy. So for the implementation with rationale for narcotic agonist, antagonist,
uh, maintain open airway and provide artificial ventilation and cardiac massage as needed to support the patient, administer vasopressors as needed to manage narcotic overdose, administer naloxone challenge before giving naltexone because of the serious risk of actual withdrawal, then um, provide continuous monitoring of the patient, adjusting the doses needed during treatment of acute overdose, and then provide comfort and safety measures to help the patient cope with the withdrawal syndrome. Lastly is to ensure that patients receiving naltrexone have been narcotic free for 7 to 10 days to prevent severe withdrawal syndrome. Check urine opioid levels if there is any questions. So for the evaluation, monitor patient response to drug, um, the reversal of opioid effects, treatment of alcohol dependence, and then monitor for adverse effects for CV changes, arrhythmias, and hypertension. Next is to evaluate the effectiveness of the teaching plan that the patient can give, if the patient can give drug name and dosage and describe possible adverse effects to watch for specific measures to prevent them and warning signs to report. And then lastly is to monitor the effectiveness of comfort measure and compliance with regimen. Moving on to the anti-migraine agents, mechanism of action and indication, ergot derivatives. In ergot derivatives, the ergot derivatives block the alpha antigenic and serotonic receptor sites in the brain to cause a constriction of cranial vessels, a decrease in cranial artery pulsation, and a decrease in the hyperperfusion hyper of the basilar artery bed. These drugs are indicated for the prevention or abortion of migraine or vascular headaches. For triptans, the triptans binds to selective serotonin receptor sites to cause vasoconstriction of cranial, cranial vessels, relieving the signs and symptoms of migraine headache. They are indicated for the treatment of acute migraine and are not used for preventive prevention of migraines. So for ano, so for the pharmacokinetics of anti-migraine agents, for the er ergot derivatives, um, they are rapidly absorbed from many roots with an onset of action ranging from 15 to 30 minutes, and they are metabolized in the liver and primarily excreted in the bile. And for the triptans, they are rapidly absorbed from many sites also and they are metabolized in the liver and some up type done by mona, monamine oxidase and are primarily excreted in the urine and they cross the placenta and have been shown to be toxic to the fetus in animal studies because they can also enter breast milk. So for the anti-migraine agent side effects, so for the ergot derivatives, CNS effects include numbness, tingling of extremities and muscle pain, CV effects such as pulse, pulselessness, weakness, chest pain, arrhythmias, localized edema, and itching, and MI may also occur. So in addition, the direct stimulation of the CTZ can cause GI upset, zea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Ergotism, a syndrome associated with the use of these drugs, causes nausea, vomiting, severe thirst, hypoperfusion, chest pain, blood pressure changes, confusion, drug dependency with prolonged use, and a drug withdrawal syndrome. So for cheap tans, CNS effects may include numbness, tingling, burning sensation, feelings of coldness or strangeness, dizziness, uh, weakness, myalgia, and vertigo. So for GI effects such as dysphagia and abdominal discomfort may occur. So CV effects can be severe and include blood pressure alterations and tightness or pressure in the chest, 
Amotriptan is reported to have fewer side effects than the other triptans, and it, uh, it is also thought that the longer half-life of this drug will prevent the rebound headaches that may be, uh, so that may be seen with other triptans. And now for the anti-migraine agents contraindication. Firstly, we have the ergot derivatives. Ergot derivatives are contraindicated in the following circumstances. circumstances. Presence of allergy to ergot, preparation to avoid hypersensitive reactions, CAD, hypertension, or peripheral vascular disease, which could be exacerbated by the CV effects of these drugs. Impaired liver function, which could alter the metabolism and excretion of drugs, and pregnancy or lactation because of the potential for adverse effects on the fetus and name it. Ergotism, such as vomiting, diarrhea, and seizures, has been reported in affected infants. Caution should be used in two instances with prolitus, which could become worse with drug induced vascular constriction and with malnutrition. And now for triptans. Allergy to any triptan to avoid hypersensitivity reaction, pregnancy because of the possibility of severe dis adverse effects of the fetus, and active CAD, which could be exacerbated by the vessel constricting effects of these drugs. These drug drugs should be used with caution in elderly patients because of the following of underlying vascular disease in patients with risk factors for CAD. In lactating women because of the possibility of adverse effects on the infant. And in patients with renal or hepatic dysfunction, which could alter the metabolism and excretion of the drug. Rizatripan seems to have more angina-related effects and it's not recommended for patients with a history of CAD which could be exacerbated by its cardiac effects. And now for the anti-migraine agents, drug-to-drug -drug interaction. And now for the ergot derivatives, if these drugs are combined with beta blockers, the risk of peripheral ischemia and gangrene is increased. Such, a, such combination should be avoided. For triptans, your gut containing drugs, risk of prolonged vasoactive reaction for MAOI, increased risk of vasoconstriction if used within two weeks of MAUI discontinuation. So, for the nursing consideration for anti migraine agents, we have the nursing assessment. So, first, assess aforementioned cautions and contraindications such as drug allergy, history of myocardial infarction, and CAD, hepatorenal dysfunction to prevent untoward complications. So, perform thorough physical, neurological status, vital signs to establish baseline status before beginning therapy. So, determine drug effectiveness and evaluate for any potential adverse effects. So, monitor laboratory test results such as fever, kidney function tests to determine need for dose adjustment, and identify possible toxic effects. So for the nursing diagnosis, uh, decreased cardiac output related to CV effects. Next is acute pain related to withdrawal and CV effects. Risk for injury related to CNS effects. So for implementation and rationale, administer drug to relieve acute migraines at first sign of headache and not to prevent migraine because these are not indicated for prevention. So, monitor for complaints of extremity numbness and tingling to identify effects on vascular constriction. Provide comfort measures to help patient cope with withdrawal syndrome. Provide safety measures such as adequate lighting. Raise side rails to prevent injury. Educate client on job therapy to promote uh, understanding and compliance. And for evaluation, monitor patient response to therapy, relief of acute migraine headache. Uh, monitor for adverse effects such as CV changes, arrhythmias, hypertension, and then evaluate patient understanding on drug therapy by asking patient to name the drug, 
its indication and adverse effects to watch for. And lastly, monitor patient compliance or job therapy. So that summarizes our report on narcotics and anti-migraine agents. So thank you for listening.